So, welcome to this second lecture in CCNA3 version 6. Uh, with me, Joachim Kjellerstad from the University of Skövde. The topic of this lecture is chapter 2 in the CCNA3 Cisco material, namely scaling networks. So, what we're going to go through in this little lecture is describe and configure VTP, extended VLANs, and DTP, and we're then going to go look at some troubleshooting of multi VLAN issues and layer 3 switching. So this is the first attempt of a lecture that is designed using the context-based microtraining where we're going to try to uh, combine some theory but hold that to a limit, the lecture part to a limit level and put the emphasis on demonstration, configuration. That's what networking is about. Uh, so what we're going to do is that we're going to, to look through a couple of slides and then we're going to do the end of chapter, chapter labs for in, that's in the Cisco material. Uh, so let's begin with looking on some background theory for VTP, VLAN trunking protocol. And basically what it's for is automatic configuration of VLANs across the switching topology. So as you know, uh, VLANs are used to virtually separate the network into different virtual segments that are separate from each other. And you do this by assigning uh, v d different access ports to different VLANs. The idea is that VLANs cannot communicate with each other. Each VLAN becomes a broadcast domain and so on and so forth. Uh, but to achieve this, each switch along the domain has to be aware of the same VLANs. And if you have a lot of switches, this can be quite troublesome. So VTP can help you with this, uh, with this configuration. We're going to, to go into how this works in just a little bit. So before we start with uh, discussing uh, how to configure VTP, we need to know about the components of, of the protocol, uh, starting with the concept of a VTP domain. And a VTP domain is basically the, the administrative domain uh, of our, uh, our VTP instance, the switches that should be aware of the same uh, of the same VLANs. So it consists of one or more interconnected switches. Uh, all switches in the domain will share the VLAN configuration using VTP advertisements, uh, which is the data, data that is sent between the different VTP enabled switches. Uh, switches that are in different VTP domains will not exchange this, these messages, and that is a common error that you misconfigured the VTP domain. Uh, and you should know that a router or layer 3 switch will define the boundary of each each domain. So so this is a little bit of, of a troublesome thing here because the VTP advertisements will be sent out to, to any switch in the domain and the, the package itself will only be limited by routers or level 3 switches. But on the other hand, you can configure the switches to be in a certain domain and it will only uh, listen to packets from, from the same domain. Uh, so then we have the VTP advertisements, and each switch in the VTP domain will send per per periodic global configuration advertisements, and will do it to from each trunk port and to a reserved multicast address that we don't really need to care about right now. And the idea is that neighboring switches will receive the advertisements and update their VTP and VLAN configurations as necessary. Uh, there are three different VTP modes, server, client, and transparent. The server mode is the server where we do the configuration uh, or set the VLANs, the clients are listening, and the transparent is a special mode that we're going to, to explore shortly. Uh, we also need to be aware of the VTP passwords. Uh, switches and VTP uh, domain can and should be configured with a password, and that's a way to ensure that, all, that VTP advertisements only come from trusted sources. Uh, so looking a little bit uh, more in-depth on the different modes, we have the server, the client, and the transparent. Uh, the VTP server is uh, responsible for advertising v VLANs in the VTP domains and to the other VTP-enabled switches. Uh, something to know about is that the VTP server will store the VLAN information for the entire domain in the non-volatile RAM, um, and the switch is configured as a VTP server are allowed to create, delete, or rename VLANs for the domain. You should also know that uh, that the VTP server mode is the default mode, and uh, and that's good to know about. Uh, so the VTP client uh, functions basically the same as the server, with the difference that you cannot create, change, or delete VLANs. Uh, a VTP client only store the VLAN information, uh, only store the VLAN information for the entire domain while the switch is. 
is on. Um, so as such, you, you, you need to be aware about the fact that on a VTP client, the VLAN configuration will be lost when, when there's a power cycle. Um, and you have to configure the VTP client mode on a switch. So transparent, which is this sort of special mode, is uh, a switch that does not participate in VTP, except that it does forward VTP advertisements to client and servers, but it maintains its own isolated VTP uh, or VLAN configuration. So VLANs that are created, renamed, or deleted on the transparent switch will be local to that switch only, and it will not learn about VLANs from the server, but it will still forward VTP advertisements to uh, between clients and servers. Uh, so, to create an extended VLAN, uh, a switch must be configured as a VTP transparent switch when using VTP versions 1 or 2. Uh, and this is one thing that you should know about VTP, it does not support extended VLANs as we're going to uh, go into quite soon. Uh, so, looking forward on VTP, uh, VTP updates VLAN configuration using advertisements and revision numbers and it does it in the way that uh, it sends out periodical uh, advertisements that are called summary advertisements. It does it to the neighbors and it contains the revision number and the domain name. Uh, then if a switch receives a summary advertisement with a higher revision number than the revision number that is currently stored in the switch then it will send out then it will see that as hey here is uh, here is some new information i need to request that to, to myself and it will send an advertisement request uh, and as a response to the request the subset advertisement will be sent out with with the updated vlan information so the communication is as follows whenever a uh, whenever the vlan um, information is updated on the server, the uh, revision number is increased and the next time a summary advertisement is sent out to the neighbors, the neighbor will realize that the revision number has increased and thus uh, that the configuration has been changed. Then the, the neighboring switches will send back an advertisement request and the, the server will send out a subset advertisement with the new VLAN information. Uh, the default behavior for Cisco devices is to send out those summary advertisements every five minutes. Uh, and something to know about is that if you want to re reset the revision configuration on a switch, you should change the VTP domain, domain name and then change it back. And that's going to reset the revision configuration. Uh, and that is something that will be important when we look at the troubleshooting and common issue parts in a little while. So getting close to the business end with VTP, uh, I just want to have a close look at the two VTP versions. There are VTP versions 1 and 2. Uh, one is default mode on all switches and it does support normal range VLANs only. Uh, we also have VTP version 2 that also does just support normal, normal range VLANs, uh, but it also supports the legacy token ring networks and it supports some advanced features including unrecognized type length values, version dependent transparent mode and uh, consistency checks. We're not going to care about that in this course, but you should know that, are, that there are different versions. Um, ending the, little, the discussion on VTP, I just want to show you uh, a picture on a common VTP uh, VTP issues, the issue that has to do with those revision numbers. The best practice whenever putting in a new switch into a, uh, into a VTP domain is to do this uh, resetting of the revision number because if you, look at, if you look at a picture here and if you look more specifically at uh, switch 4 which is a new switch to be added in this, in this domain you can see that the other switches 1, 2 and 3 they are in the VTP domain name Cisco 1 and they have VLANs 10 and 20 with revision number 17. So what will happen if we add switch 4 with a higher revision number but a different VLAN configuration is that it is going to send that information out. It's going to send a summary advertisement saying, hey, I, am revision, I have revision number 35. And in this case, switch 3 being a VTP client is going to respond, hey, that's higher than mine. I on, I'm only at 17. Could you give me that VLAN configuration that you're holding? And switch 4 will say, yeah, sure, I have VLANs 30 and 40 and nothing else. And switch 3 is going to remove VLAN 10 and 20 and then add 30 and 40 instead, causing a VTP inconsistency. 
so this is why you always have to reset the revision number by changing the VTP domain name and then changing it back again to whatever you want and make sure that you do this whenever you're going to put in a new switch into the domain. So if there's any questions on this block, feel free to uh, ask it in class if you're in a class with me. Otherwise, you should apply to one of my courses at www.his.se. Uh, otherwise, you could just post them in the comments field and I will try to answer as best as I can. Uh, now we'll move on to extended VLANs and uh, it's just one very brief slide uh, and the deal is basically that we have normal range VLANs ranging from number VLAN number 1 to 1005. Those are stored in VLAN.dat uh, in the flash memory of the switch. So it survives a re reboot and it also survives a race startup com config uh, and it can be managed using VTP. Uh, in some cases you need more VLANs than that and then you have to resort to extended VLANs and those are VLANs from uh, 1006 to 4096. Those are not stored in VLAN but that but in running, running config or startup config and can be erased by erasing startup and running config of course. Uh, they cannot be managed using VTP and that is something that you should know about. So if you plan for using VTP in your domain you cannot use VTP to configure the extended VLANs. Uh, so let's uh, in a little while we're going to have a look at creating VLANs and adding switch ports to VLANs and VTP. But I just want to mention uh, the DTP protocol, which is dynamic trunking protocol. Uh, this is a nice way for me to just stop and realize that we're moving through theory at a very rapid pace. Uh, and if the speed is too much for you and if you feel that you're not really grasping what I'm saying, uh, you should feel free to use the pause button and just pause, look at the slides, uh, consider what you're learning, take, uh, take, the, take the chance to do some theory or grab a bit of coffee or read in the material. Something that I really like in the Cisco material is that they all usually have those end of chapter uh, sort of tasks that you can do to check that you grasp the content that you just read or listened to and if things are getting too much for you and it's too much at the same time just take a break uh, do something else do something practical which we're going to do in a little while but it could also be advised to do it when you just think that I talk too much. Uh, it's basically the nature of data communication that you're going to be brainwashed with a lot of protocols that may, may, may cause your ears to bleed a little bit, but it's, it's like the way that it has to be done in my opinion, but you should manage it on yourself and that's why we're doing this with a video lecture so that you can go do something else when there is too much theory. Uh, so DTP, what is that? The dynamic trunking protocol. And while my love for DTP is somewhat limited, but we're going to go through it anyway because it's a part of the CCNA3 material, uh, what it does is that it allows for automatic negotiation on, uh, of the trunk mode on switch port. Uh, it's Cisco proprietary and enabled by default on most Cisco switches. Uh, it can be dis disabled with, this, with interface command switch port no negotiate. Uh, and it's active on the local link only. So the idea with DTP is that you should be able to configure a port uh, to be in trunk mode if the outer part of the link also wants to be in trunk mode. Uh, so remember that we have the normal switch mo port modes trunk and access. Uh, tr an access port is assigned to one single VLAN and commonly used for uh, for access to, to end devices, whereas trunks are usually used in between switches and can carry traffic from different VLANs. And when, uh, when traffic is on a, uh, on a trunk, it will have a tag uh, des describing which VLAN the traffic, be the traffic belongs to and all of that nice things. Uh, so, uh, instead of switch port mode trunk, you can do dynamic auto or dynamic desirable, and that will make DTP work for you. Uh, so, basically, if you configure a port as dynamic auto, you're saying, uh, well, I can consider being in a trunk mode if the other end, end wants to. So, if you have a dynamic auto, auto port and the other side uh, is, is trunk, it's going to be a trunk if the other side is access it's going to be access then we have dynamic desirable saying that i can be a trunk if the other side accepts it uh, but i really really want to be a trunk so if you have dynamic desirable 
uh, and you have the other the other side being dynamic auto desirable or trunk then dynamic desirable will be a trunk port uh, it's still going to be an access port if the other side is uh, hard, hard configured to be an access port but for instance if you have dynamic desirable on one side and dynamic auto on the other side then the result is that the port is going to be a trunk for me I, th I still think that while you, since you have to configure DTP, you might as well just configure trunk or access so, so you're sure of what's happening. I don't really see the usefulness in this, but I'm sure it's going to end up on a practical test near you and you're surely going to get questions on it on a theoretical qu quiz in this course. Uh, so let's just have a look on DTP, VTP and extended VLANs and I'm going to see how smooth they can be with changing what I'm doing. And well, I gotta say it worked rather well. So this is the Cisco Packet Tracer uh, task 2.1.4.4, configure VLANs, VTP and DTP. And what we're gonna go is yes to go through it. So uh, as you see here, we have our topology in Packet Tracer and we have our uh, and we have our activity scenario and tasks here. Uh, so the idea here is that we're going to first configure and verify DTP. So uh, so that these links are being negotiated as trunks with DTP, and then we're going to do some VTP to uh, to assign VLANs to to the network. Uh, so the first part here is that we're going to configure switch one and switch two. Uh, to be dynamic desirable on the gigabit, gigabit Ethernet 01 interface and we're going to do that by beginning to go to switch one we go to our little CLI and I hope that you can see this just fine uh, so enable to go to privileged executive configuration terminal to go to the configuration mode and then we're just gonna do uh, interface and we're going to do gigabit ethernet 01 and then we're gonna do switch port mode and as I told you the ones that we have is either trunk or access to hard co code trunk or access mode but we can also do uh, dynamic to have DTP work for us in this case we're gonna do DTP uh, and the DTP mode dynamic desirable meaning that this is a port it will be a trunk if the other side of the link is either a trunk, dynamic desirable, or dynamic auto. So a lot of things is happening and one of the cool things with working with Cisco is that you don't really know what pre-configuration is. So let's go do the same thing on switch number two and we'll see what happens. So we're going to the CLI, we go enable, we go configure terminal, interface gig O. O1, and then we do switchboard mode, dynamic, desirable. Change state to up, and then I guess we can do uh, a do show interface gig O1, and we'll see that it's. Let's do a show. What I just did was show interface trunk, and I since show are only for privileged executive mode I have to do a do in in front first so if we look at our port gig gigabit 01 we can see that the mode is desirable and the status is trunking uh, as the other side was also dynamic desirable so that's good we managed to do that very nice so for the let's go to B here and for the link between S1 and S3, the idea is to configure a static trunk link uh, that's going to be on the gig 02 interface. So let's just go back and go gig 02 and then it's just switch port mode trunk. And then we go to switch 3 and we do the same. Configuration terminal, interface gig 02 and we do switch port mode trunk and we can just uh, do show inter trunk to see that it worked and we can see here for port gigo 2 that we have mode on and status is trunking so that's it 
and verify yep we just did that and um, we can move on to D which is where we're going to configure uh, the native VLAN for trunk links on S1 I guess that there is okay let's see let's just follow the rules and see what happens so this is a good time to show you how to configure multiple switch ports uh, when you're doing interface configuration you usually do interface gig or whatever but you may also do interface range to configure a number of ports at the same time so in this case we're going to do interface range gigabit uh, 01 and then we go dash uh, whatever we want so if we can do 48 to configure all ports at once but now it's just uh, interface 1 and 2 so we do interface range gigabit ethernet 0 a one to two and then we're going to change the native VLAN of this trunk and the native VLAN is the VLAN that will be used to carry traffic that does not come in uh, on a VLAN interface so for instance if you have a switch connected to a um, uh, if you have information originating from a switch it's going to it's not going to be tagged with a VLAN because it doesn't come from an access port that belongs to a VLAN so there has to be a native VLAN where where the switch can can tag the traffic and the default behavior for for most trunk uh, for for well basically anything that has to do with trunking or link aggregation or whatever is that the native vlan must be matching on all switches uh, within the domain otherwise the stuff is going to stop working uh, so let's go here and do switch port trunk native vlan 999 as we're asked to, to do and now I'm guessing that we're going to see some errors coming out here. Yep, we see that we get some spanning tree blocking some port because of inconsistent local VLAN. And that is because the default native VLAN is 1. And the v native VLAN for those two trunk ports that are connected to switch 1, the one here and the one here, those are switch 2 and switch 3 are configured to use uh, VLAN number one as the native VLAN and that's going to create issues. So the next thing we have to do is configure VLAN 999 as the native VLAN for those switches as well. Luckily I guess that we are already in uh, interface, interface configuration mode so we only have to do switch port mode trunk no Switch port trunk native VLAN 999. It's going to be happy. Let's do the same thing on switch 3. Switch port trunk native VLAN 999. And we're done with it. And you also see we get a message here saying port consistency restored. And everyone is happy. So now we have trunking working. And uh, for that reason, we're going to start to go into configuring VTP uh, and we're going to configure VTP so that we do, we can have uh, VLANs automatically correct, uh, configured in, in our little network here and we will do that by sending switch 1 as the server and 2 and 3 as clients. Uh, so what we're going to do is that we're just going to have to go into switch 1 and uh, we can go we can go end and go back from the beginning and I just want to do a show VTP status which is the way to show VTP information and you can see that the VTP operating mode as of now is transparent so this one is working on its own and what we're going to do is that we're going to go to configuration terminal and we're going to configure it to be a server with a, uh, within domain CCNA and with a password Cisco uh, so to do that we go simply go VTP mode server and you can see that it's setting the device to VTP server mode. Then we do VTP domain CCNA. And finally, we do VTP password Cisco. You should notice that the domain name and the password are both case sensitive. Me, myself, did that error on a number of times. So let's just do a do show VTP status to show to see that to see that it worked and we can see that we have operating mode server we have the domain name 
CCNA. The password is not being shown here, which is quite reasonable. And we're working on VTP version two. Uh, and the current revision number is zero. And that's reasonable because we didn't configure any VLANs yet. So uh, now we're going to uh, now we're going to move on to configuring S2 and S3 for the V2P domain. Uh, what we're going to do is that we begin with switch two. We're going to configure it as client, and we do that with VTP mode client. And if you do a question mark after VTP mode, you can see that the modes are, as we said, client, server, and transparent. Where the server is, where we do the configuration. The clients are accepting the configuration that is getting get that it gets from the summary advertisements. And transparent is if we want to have a switch working on its own, and the transparent switch will send on the advertisements, but it's not going to update its own uh, VLAN configuration. Uh, also, the server and transparent are the only ones that we can configure VLANs on. The client is just going to accept what it gets from the advertisements. Uh, but remember also that transparent mode will not, the configuration of the VLANs on the transparent mode is not going to affect the rest of the domain. So. VTP mode client, and then we have to do VTP domain CCNA because it has to match VTP domain uh, VTP password Cisco. Don't use that for real. And we're going to verify by do show VTP status. You can see that the version is two, uh, operating as client, and the domain name is CCNA. So that's all nice, well, and good. Let's do the same thing on switch three, yes, real quick. So we go to configuration terminal, we go VTP mode client, VTP domain CCNA, already set. Well, that's nice. Uh, VTP, now there's one thing that we're gonna show. Do show VTP status. We're gonna, I, I just wanna check the revision number here and it's zero because it told me when I did the VTP domain, it was only set to CCNA. So that's sort of an indication that this has been used in the domain with that name before, and it could have a very high revision number and that could cause uh, inconsistencies. So you should always uh, make the, uh, as a best, best practice, when you're inputting a switch into a VTP domain, make sure that the revision number is zero. And if it isn't, you can reset the revision number by uh, changing the domain name and then changing it back. So finally, VTP password Cisco. And now this little VTP domain should be up and running. So looking further in the instruction, uh, the next thing what, that we're gonna do is that we're going to create some VLANs on switch one. We're going to create some normal range VLANs and that is because VTP can only uh, support normal range VLANs uh, and not the extended ones. So uh, creating VLANs is done real simple. VLAN, VLAN number, in this case 10. If we want to name, we just go name, and in this case red. And as you see, when we do uh, the VLAN command, uh, so we're gonna do next VLAN 20, the uh, prompt is changed from config to config VLAN because we're getting into the VLAN configuration mode where there is a few things we can do. Uh, for now, we're only caring about the name, name blue, exit, do VLAN 30, that's going to be named yellow, and that is it. Uh, remember that the configuration revision for VTP was zero, and if we do a uh, do show VTP status right now, you can see that it has been updated to six. So every configuration change will update the revision number. And in this case, we created three VLANs. So that's three configuration changes. And we also gave them names. So that's another three adding up to six changes. Um, so next, we're just going to see that switch two and three receive the VLAN configuration. And we so we simply go do show VTP status on one of the other switches, and you can see that the revision number is six. And if we go do show VLAN to have a listing of the existing VLANs, you can also see that 10, 20, and 30 as we created are active on the switch. Um so that's all nice and good. We can we might as well see that it's the same here. Do show VLAN. 
and yes, there they are. Now I didn't really follow the instruction, but on the other hand, who cares? And uh, the next thing we're going to do is do some switch port assignments, and I'm just going to do this on um, I'm just going to do it on switch two. Uh, so the final thing that we want to do now that the VLANs are all out in the switching domains is that we want to uh, add our access ports connecting to the clients to the correct VLANs. Here you should know some best practices, and that is that all access ports that are not currently used should be turned off, and we're going to do that as well. So, for switch 2, uh, FOSD Ethernet port 1 to 8 are going to be in VLAN 20, so the way that we achieve that is by interface range, so we can configure multiple ports as one, at once, and we do FOSD Ethernet 0, 1 to 8, and then we just go switch port mode access to make it access ports, and then switch port access VLAN 10 to assign them to the correct VLAN. And then we can just go up and we do range 0, uh, 9 to 16. Those ports are going to be in VLAN 20. So we do switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 20. And those ports are effect effectively assigned to uh, VLAN 20. And finally, we have ports... 17 to 24, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 30, and we're done with that as well. We can go do show VLAN to see that it worked, and if we look at VLAN 10, you see that there is a number of ports assigned to it. It looks really crappy, the output, so that's better. VLAN 20 has the correct ports, VLAN 30 has the correct ports. As you're seeing, something that I do consistently when I configure is that whenever I configure something, I make sure that I verify it on the fly doing a show command or something similar. And that is very good because you don't want to do a full task or a full set of configuration and then not testing it until you're done. Because if you test it when you're done and you realize that things are not working, then you're not going to know what it is that isn't working. Um, so we said that we we're going to do some best practice and turning off the ports that are not being used. So let's just see for VLAN uh, 10, we can see that the port being used is FOSD Ethernet 01. So let's just turn off ports uh, 02 to 08. We do that by going switch port mode. No, we don't. We do that by interface range FOSD Ethernet 02 to Eight, and then we just go uh, shut down. And what you should know is that in contrast to router port, switch ports are enabled by default. So instead of having to go no shutdown when we want them enabled, we have to ha go shut down when we want them down. And that is of course because you can use uh, pretty much any Cisco switch as an unmanaged switch, meaning that you can just take it out of the box and configure it uh, or and plug it into the network and cable it up and it's going to shuffle some traffic. But that wouldn't work if everything was closed down. So there is things that we haven't done, which I guess has to do with uh, VLAN uh, assignments of ports on Switch 3. We're not going to do that. I'm leaving that up to you. Uh, what we looked on now is a little bit about how to configure DTP, VTP, and assigning VLANs to switches. Uh, one of the things that you really have to remember is this one of resetting the revision number on a switch when adding it to a network, because if I'm setting up as one of those switches, with a higher revision number than the one that is currently the highest in the domain, then the new switch is going to affect the topology and, and create inconsistencies, and that's not something that we want to do. Um, so let's move back to the theory and flip down this activity. Uh, do you want to say your word? No. Uh, what we're going to do is go back to our lecture slide, and we're going to look at extended VLANs. No, we're not. We're going to look at troubleshooting. Uh, so we're, we have to talk about some, uh, I just want to describe some of the more common issues with uh, inter-VLAN routing, VTP and DTP. So looking at uh, VLAN routing, the most common issues are incorrect VLAN assignment of ports, 
uh, and having the links to the router in access mode instead of trunk when we use a uh, router on a stick and of course incorrect IP addressing on router interfaces and sub interfaces. All of those sounds quite obvious. I mean if we don't have the right VLAN assignment of, on ports then inter VLAN routing will of course be inconsistent. The same if we have the wrong port mode on the switch port connected to the router when we do router on a stick. Of course, if we have incorrect IP addressing, routing is not going to work. Those are still worth mentioning because they're so common even if they are, uh, they are certain. So with VTP, what we have to be aware of is inconsistent domain uh, password or VTP version that will cause the domain to not work. And just make sure that, you, that whenever you're using VTP, the domain password and version is same across all switches. Simple as that. Also, make sure that you don't set all switches to client or transparent mode because then nothing is going to happen. And make sure that you know who is your server. Uh, the main one that I want to address is the revision number issues that we've been discussing over and over again. And that is so important because if you input wrong VTP numbers within the domain, or wrong VTP configuration, then the VLANs will be messed up and communication will just stop working. And that is basically the biggest issue you'll, ha you'll have in a running network. These things with client and transparent mode and also the normal inter-VLAN issues, they're, they're going to present themselves to, during setup of the network. I mean, it's not going to work from the start, but it's perfectly uh, doable to put in a new switch in the VTP domain with a too high revision number and that's going to destroy your current configuration. So for DTP some of the more common issues include, include trunk mode mismatch, uh, incorrect list of allowed VLANs and native VLAN mismatch. And those with native VLAN mismatch and incorrect list of allowed VLANs, those are the most important in my opinion. And remember that whenever we have trunks, we must make sure that native VLAN is the same on both sides of the trunk and also that the list of allowed VLANs is the same uh, on both sides of the trunk. So let's have a look on some troubleshooting in Packet Tracer again uh, before we go back to look at some layer 3 switching. So for this task we're going to start with troubleshooting DTP and then what we're concerned with is uh, basically the trunk lines between the switches. So there is this one between switch 1 and switch 2 and this one between switch 1 and switch 3. So let's start with looking at switch 1 and we're going to try to hover the little balls here to see what ports it is. It's gig 1 and gig 2 and let's just click the switch. I'm not going to care about the instructions too much. I'm just going to make it work for this one. So what we're going to do first is to go show interface trunk to see how they're configured. That's the Cisco way uh, of troubleshooting. I uh, still have to configure it, uh, write it correctly though. And we can see that there are no trunks, so there are obviously issues. So let's go look at the running configuration with show run and I'm just going to see how they're configured. And for gigabit, well for both gigabit 01 and 02 you can see that the issue is quite obvious because they're in switch port mode, uh, mode access. Uh, let's do them in switch, uh, dynamic desirable so that they will turn into trunk if the other side is either using DTP uh, with dynamic desirable or dynamic auto or if they're configured as trunk statically. Uh, so we're, we have to correct that on gigabit ethernet 01 and 02 so we might just go into configuration terminal and then we're going to do interface range gigabit 01 to 2. Feel free to pause me if I'm moving too fast. So we go switch port mode dynamic desirable and that's it. And there's a command, the command is rejected because there's no negotiate somewhere. And where the hell was that? Do show run. See, it's not on this one. So let's just do, do this the easy way and go switch port mode trunk because I want you to be a trunk. And then we go to switch two and make sure that we can have a trunk on this line. Enable do show run. No, we're in privileged executive, so you just show run. And then it is gigabit ethernet 01. Switch port mode access for this one as well. And then we'll just go to uh, 
configuration terminal, interface gigabit one, and then we can try to do switch port mode, dynamic, desirable, uh, still no negotiate, so we do switch port mode. Prompt. So this is the real way of troubleshooting. I'm guessing that the assignment wants me to remove no negotiate, and I'm not really inclined to do that, so I'm just gonna do it to try. Another thing that we have to look at while we're here in the running config is that we ha we're having a look on the switch port crank need to VLAN. It's 999 and plus 999 on switch one as well. So let's go to switch three and then we're going to do enable and we're going to go show, show uh, we're going to do a show run. I'm mumbling. I'm sorry for that. And let's look at gig. O2, it's switch port mode access with the correct native VLAN. So, well, switch port mode access, that's not a trunk. So we go to configuration terminal, interface gig O2, switch port mode trunk, and we should be done with it. Right, let's just verify by doing show interface trunk, and you can see that gig O2 is in trunking mode. So that's good. Uh, we'll just verify it on switch one as well so we don't have any weirdities. And you can see that gig one and gig two are both trunks, native VLAN 999, and we have a nice list of loud VLANs. So now I'm guessing that the next thing that we're gonna do is to troubleshoot VTP, and the idea is that switch one is to be the VTP server, and two and three will be the clients. We should use CCNA as the domain and Cisco as the password. And all the VLANs are already configured at switch one, which is nice. Okay, so let's go to switch one, go to configuration terminal, and we're going to do a show VTP summary to see what we're working. Oh, no, show VTP status. Show, maybe, not just do. And we can see that this one switch is configured in transparent mode with current revision zero. Uh, I actually don't want to start with this one because if I do this as a client and one of the other switches are already in the domain as uh, in server mode with the correct domain and password, then we're going to get into issues. So let's wait with switch one and do the clients first. So we're doing uh, switch two and uh, do a show VTP status. And we can see that this one is transparent. Revision number is zero. We can work with that. Uh, and we, so we do a VTP mode client to fix that. And then we're going to have a VTP domain CCNA. And we're going to have a VTP password Cisco. So that's it. Uh, we go do show VTP status to verify and we can see that what we did has been applied. Let's do the other client. Let's start with show VTP status so we know what we have to modify. We can see that it's transparent, revision number is zero so everything is fine. So simply go VTP mode client VTP the main name doesn't have to be changed, but let's set the password yes to be sure. And finally, then we do switch one, and uh, which has to be VTP mode server, and then we're gonna do VTP domain CCNA and VTP password Cisco. And now there is an issue here because the revision number is zero across, across all switches, so we have to enforce an update on the on the VLAN configuration. And the easiest way to do that is to add and remove a non-existent uh, a VLAN that we don't don't need to have. So what I do is do show VLAN, and we can see we have 10, 20, 30, la, 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 and so on and so forth. So what I'm gonna do here is yes to add VLAN 500. And then I'm going to do exit, and then I'm gonna do no VLAN 500. What I just did was two modifications to the to the VLAN configuration, and that ensures that I have a, a new new revision number for VTP, 
As you see, VTP revision is zero, and that makes sure that the configuration on this switch is propagated to the other switches. Let's just verify that. If we do show VTP status on switch two, you can see that the current revision is two, and we'll do the same on switch on switch three. So that's basically it for uh, for VTP and DTP troubleshooting. I am actually not going to go into troubleshooting of port assignments because, I mean, what we can do if we want to verify the ports on switch 3 is that we just go do show run, we'll look through the list and see where all the ports are assigned. And we'll assign them as we want to with switch port mode access and then switch port access VLAN and whatever VLAN we want. So that's it for that demonstration. Now we're going back to the theory real quick because something that we want to do is that we want to look at... Um, we want to look at some layer 3 switching. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, you can just post them in the comment field, or if you're in class, just ask me or one of the supervisors. So, uh, just briefly on layer 3 switching, you should know that mo modern switches usually include some layer 3 functionality, allowing them to do routing using static routes or even routing protocols. Full layer 3 switches are a combination of switches and routers, allowing you to have the switching functionality and routing functionality on the same device, uh, efficiently allowing you to put the inter-VLAN routing closer to the hosts and uh, you don't have to have a router on a, st on a stick solution and it also allows for what is called wire speed routing where you route traffic using the switch which usually have a much higher forwarding rate of data packages. Uh, the only downside really with layer 3 switch with layer 3 switching is that the devices are quite expensive. Uh, however, to really emphasize this uh, performance increase Consider a case where you do interview on routing using router on stick for a domain that contains like 20 different VLANs. Whenever a package is supposed to traverse between those VLANs, it has to go up to the router and be routed. If you were instead having layer 3 switches, in, like in the topology here, the interview on routing could be done on this level here, in the distribution le le layer that is, uh, that is connected to the access layer. So you'll have the routing much closer to the clients and you'll also have, have the routing handled by the device that is able to forward uh, data much quicker. And uh, so how do we do this? To facilitate routing on a layer three switch, what we need to do is that we need to create a switched virtual, virtual interface for each VLAN. Um, and to do that, we create the VLAN. So if we want to have VLAN 20 and 20, 10 and 20 and we want to switch to to route between those two, what we do is that we create VLAN 20 and 20, then we create the virtual interfaces for VLAN, VLAN 20 and 20, and then we have to implement routing between VLAN 10 and 20. Uh, so higher end switches can even allow you to configure router ports that, sh that should be used to point to point links. They are configured using no switch port on the switch port. And uh, this is unfortunately not available on the Cisco. Uh, 2260 switches, which is the switches that are most commonly used for the CCNA lab gear. Uh, so now that we know this, uh, I mean, I just want to show you in Inable how to do this uh, this uh, routing using a layer three switch. So here we have our practical, and uh, I just want to tell you that what I encourage you to do to d really do this as uh, as a context based micro training sort of sort of action is that whenever we're doing the practicals you should either follow along or just turn me off and do the practical yourself and then you can and then you can watch my demonstration if you need help but the idea here is that we want to have a little bit of theoretical background but then i want you to work on your own and to to really facilitate what we're doing and also after each practical demonstration even if you're following along and looking at what i'm doing in the demonstration you should still do it on your own to really uh, to really get down and dirty with with the configuration because i really 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 think that's the best way to learn to go down and just do the configuration tasks on your own understanding what you're doing and and yeah so instead of just looking on the video lectures from start to finish pause whenever there is a practical uh, you may want to look at the practical or you want to start trying to do it on your own, but make sure that either before or after the demonstrations, you do the practicals on your own. 
so now we're on a task where we're going to configure inter-VLAN and routing on a layer 3 switch. So in this case, we have our layer 3 switch, which, which is denoted MLS here. And we're actually going to do two things. So the first thing we're going to do is that we're going to do the port that is towards the cloud here. We're going to configure that as a routed port, so it's not a switch port anymore. And then we're going to add VLANs and the uh, switch virtual interface on MLS. And then we're going to configure routing in between the VLANs that are in the, this, this domain. And as, uh, as, a, as a disclaimer, the VLANs are 10, 20, and 30, as usual. So what we do is that we get into the CLI. And first, we're going to do this little routed port. Uh, so what we simply have to do is do enable. Uh, configuration terminal and then the interface that we're going to modify is gigabit 02 and what we basically do is that we go no switch port and then configure the IP address which in this case is 209 165 200 225 and the subnet mask 255 255 255252. Five, two. And that's it. So we'll just verify connectivity with, to the cloud with ping, which is a privileged executive mode command. So we have to do go do first. So we do ping 209 165 200 226. And then we wait. And then you should know that the first ping usually fails. And that is because what happens when we ping some layer three address is that we're going to have an ARP, look, uh, ARP request in the ARP process and that is going to take so much time that the first ping will time out. Um, so that's it. Next thing we're going to do is configure some inter-VLAN routing. So the first thing we have to do is add some VLANs to the switch. VLAN 10, not going to care about the name so I just go VLAN 20 and then I'm going to go VLAN 30. If you want your completion rate to be 100, I'm sure you have to do the names as well. And so next thing we're going to do is that we're going to configure and activate switch virtual interfaces for those VLANs according to the addressing table up on top. And what we do then is basically interface, but instead of having a gigabit something, we go VLAN and the VLAN number. So interface VLAN 10, the IP address is supposed to be uh, IP address 192.168.10.254. Uh, I'm just going to check for the subnet mask. It's that. It's 255.255.255.0. And then I always do a no check because it's in my spine. And then we do VLAN 20. For VLAN 20, we have the same address, but 20 instead of 10. And then we go no shot. And then we have VLAN 30. And finally, VLAN 99. And I do see that there is a native VLAN mismatch somewhere here that Cisco hid for us, very nice. And uh, let's hope that we don't have to fix that. So that's all the switch virtual interface. If you want to verify, we can either go do show run. And you can see that here are the interfaces. You can also go do show IP int brief. We'll have a, have a listing and you can see that they're up. So that's all nice and good. Let's see what the next task is. We want, they want us to look at the routing table. Show IP route and there is nothing there. Because we don't have routing enabled. Uh, to enable routing on the, uh, on the Cisco layer 3 switch, we just go IP route and routing. And then you should see that we have a routing table. So now there isn't really much more that we have to do because since all of those networks are directly connected uh, with the interfaces, it's already uh, it's already working and it's already done. So we're just going to do some pinging to see 
uh, so to see if everything works. We do that with the built-in Cisco feature. So we just go ping PC5 to PC0, and we're gonna see if it worked. First one always failed, as I told you, PC5 to PC0, successful, and we managed to configure interview and routing on a layer three switch. So everyone is happy and everything is good. Looking to my, uh, looking to my theoretical backgrounds, uh, there isn't really much to do, uh, but you should, so we're basically done. And this is it for CCNA 2, CCNA 3 version 6, chapter 2, with me, Joachim Scherrestad from the University of Hövde. And this was my first try of having this kind of practical uh, video lecture. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and see you next time for chapter 3, which I think is spanning tree. Good, thanks and bye.